because they don't want to be blamed for something. Oh my. Wow. That is so accurate. Okay, okay. I'm going to I'm going to say this as vague as I can, <laughs> but that's so funny you just said that cuz I'm like, wait, that just came up this week. Okay, um so uh okay, someone we know was doing a talk uh to enrich the lives of other people and like, you know, give them guidance. And then these people were like like the system's the problem. Mm. It's not like these strategies are elitist. You can get like just basically like just how to chill out strategies, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And um, then people were speaking up, being like, like you know, we can't do these. It's the system that has to change, not us, right? And they were getting like really bad. And then the person who was like trying to enrich other people's lives were like, "Bro, I'm just trying to give you strategies. Like, I'm, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't, yeah, work, yeah, I don't yeah. work for this thing. Like, it's you know, yeah, yeah." And, yeah, and yeah. we were like discussing it. And I was like, and after the discussion, it was like, oh, it's because people don't want to accept. Like, as soon as you're like, hey, you here are some strategies that can help you, then the the actual onus becomes on you, not on the other thing. Exactly. But they didn't want it to be on them, so they automatically shifted. Like, no, it's the system. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, but you have these options, bro. Like, you could just do these, mm -hmm. make right. your life better. Like, I can't because the system's holding me down. And it's like, if you keep thinking like that, then you're powerless. Like, you are literally. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's funny because, like, when you said it, like, it clicked in my head. Like, that is really what a big problem is. People don't want to take accountability for their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my life sucks. Like, yeah, make it better. Like, I can't because duh, duh, duh. it's like those are obstacles. You're right. Maybe you shouldn't have chosen this job. Maybe you should <laughs> go back. To, maybe you should do this. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? It's like. But then people are like, well, if I was born in Africa and I was starving, or like if I was born in North Korea and I was being beaten to death, it's like very fair point. Not everyone is like Eddie Wong said this. He's like, we're all starting off at different places with different attributes in the video game called life. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, we're not all privy to the same things, the same privileges, but you make the best with the character that you have. Like when you're playing a video game, it's like you don't all start off with like maxed out attributes. No, you don't. You build towards that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm I'm playing cyberpunk right now. There's choices. You can either start off in the corporate world. You can start off as a uh, like a kid, it? street kid, street kid. And then what was the last one? Is like a Borderlands kind of person, like outside. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like okay, those are three completely different lifestyles. You know, if you, I chose the Borderland dude that outside the world and. um why would I get upset at his situation, the character situation? It's mm -hmm. like, no, there's just, there's just how we're starting off the game. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, if you think of it like that, it's like, okay, let's just, let's just play it out. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Then even then, if you think of it the way you were saying it, then you're way better off than the ones that are in North Korea or. Yeah. Right. You take it relative. Yeah. You're like, dude, that sucks. But. You know, yeah, my situation is a lot better than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And like, I heard this like described before. It's like called infinite inventory. Mm -hmm. And basically, what you're doing, shout out to my yoga training, because <laughs> that's where I stole it from. Infinite inventory, and like, what it is, like, no matter what your situation, it could always be worse. So you just kind of think like, well, at least it's not. Mm -hmm. At least it's not. And then that gives you like a tool, you know. People don't like that too all the time though. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like, I tried that once and they were like, but it's my situation. I'm like, okay, fair. Let's just focus on your situation. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you can't yeah, see yeah, yeah. past because, because it's because you're, when your back's against the wall, you can't use those tools, but you know what it is? It's like, it's like Batman begins. You have to swim in the darkness in order to build up from the darkness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what was the main training at the end of his? What was his initiation? They blew basically a psychedelic into Batman's face, mm -hmm. and he had to work through his trauma and like come out the other side stronger. Yeah, right. That opening ninja bit, mm -hmm. and I always took that to heart. I was like, yeah, you have to be face to face with it. Like, stare deep into the void and don't blink. 
It's like, how bad can it get? All right, let's look at it. Cool. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. Let's work from here. But most people don't like to swim in the deep, dark void. No. You know? Yeah, it's a survival thing. Uh, it is you... a survival thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I was I was consoling this one person and they're like, Wow, you're really good at consoling. I'm like, I've just been I've just been in deep water, bro. I know I know where you're gonna take your mind. Cause I've been there. Like mm -hmm. I know spiraling sucks. Yeah, totally. But it's like I've built tools to be like, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. We have to do something, you know. You know, be the crate. Uh, don't wish it upon me. Knock on wood. This is fake wood, but knock on wood. But it would be really interesting for me to get a really bad disease and see if I could pull back from that. That would be <laughs> really interesting training because it's like mm -hmm. that's right. deep water. That's sure. real deep water. Right now, like my my traumas that I work through are like, you know, they're superficial. Trauma is trauma. You always like. I'm thinking about the dentist. I'm so afraid of the dentist. Mm -hmm. I'm going this week, but I'm like getting better at it. You know, but like. It's like, how deep can you go without caving? Right. But most people don't even want to try going deep. No, because again, survival, comfortability. Is... I know, right? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. And that's just instinctual. But again, it's like, in order to elevate as a species, maybe we need to swim in these deep waters. We need to get past our survival mechanism mm -hmm. in order to like, like work as a, maybe that's what it means to be an enlightened society, just mm -hmm. not a survival society. Right. Actually, that's a really good thought though. Cause maybe, cause you know, when they're like, oh, there's like enlightened societies out there, they're like advanced. It's like the only thing they're advanced from is their survival state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not like their backs, not against the wall. They've already come to terms with their trauma. And then they're like, okay, let us, let us move forward into love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, term, right? What is love? But, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, let's not be ruled by fear. Let's be ruled by wonder, excitement, joy, all those things. Right. That sounds so, I hate it when people say that on podcasts. <laughs> and I'm like, because when they say it, it's like, well, what have you done? What have you done to say that? You know? Because like I was listening to this podcast, like um, Theories of Everything. Love that guy. This is not a criticism on you. Love that guy. He's the Torontonian. Oh, okay. Yeah, scientist. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, this might sound really dumb, but I think we all need to lead with love in this world and we need to un enjoy. I'm like, totally. Right. And the people he was talking to were like, yeah, that's that's what a lot of the enlightened people were saying. I'm like, for sure. Tell me that when you see a baby's head get cut off right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, does that still hold? You you have to test your you have to pressure test your theory. Should we lead by love? Okay. There's a a dude that's raped like 20 million women. Still lead with love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Right? And pressure test, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, that, that that was, you know, I was seeing that with that show with the Masters of the Air, which is that kind of question about war. Mm, okay. Because You're, of the bloodshed. The bloodshed, You're like right? The killing that happened with war. The innocence, a lot of people that are died were also very, just innocent people, civilians. But this is the casualties of war and trying to stop Hitler. Right. Right. Oh, that's a good point. Hitler, can you lead with love? <laughs> right? And and I think that's like, no, yeah, it's a good point, actually, because war is like the most salient example. It's like so mm -hmm. obvious in our face. And like, Hitler's the biggest bad guy. So if you're telling me to lead with love, can you do that with Hitler? Yeah, I I think that was the thing, right? The World War II was that question because they didn't want to go to war. But it, the only option was that was left was that. Yes, 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 yes. Le okay, let's define love. I know we've talked about this before. Like we've defined love before. Mm -hmm. But like, it's important to bring it back here. So like the best, the best line I've ever heard for love is, is from Osho actually. If you watch Wild Wild Country, can you still lead with love? Mm -hmm. All right, anyways, so, um, so love is, 
seeing a flower and not picking it. Mm -hmm. Because if you pick that flower, it will die. Yeah. Meaning if you try and shape that thing into what it is, then mm -hmm. it will not be that thing anymore, right? I think that's what love is. But that's basically acceptance. That's literally the exact same thing. Yeah, You're yeah, just yeah. accepting what that thing is. Like, okay, totally. I see you as a thorny rose, right? Hitler, I see you as like poison ivy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, poison ivy, do your thing. I, If you encroach on the rest of the world, we might have to pick you. We might have to like pull you out of the ground because like your poison iviness is spreading towards the world, right? right? But I'm not hating you for being poison ivy. I'm just acknowledging your poison ivy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what leading with love is. It's just, but our, the reason why I say that is because like, I think we have a skewed definition for what love is. It's like, you know, sure. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like Jesus, love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Like what? If, if your enemy hits you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Cause you love them. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? what does that mean? What do you mean? Love? Like, I have to be compassionate towards you. I have to be uh, romantic towards you. Mm -hmm. you Cause like, you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, it, it becomes a, a, the definition is too broad. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Love. You, this, this <laughs> yeah, yeah, out, you gotta explain what do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what, yeah. you know, I, any books or stories, it's, it ends up becoming a person's interpretation. Yes. Yeah, totally. So, and it's experiential Yeah. because you have to feel it. No, no. It's, it's, experience, it's experiential plus knowledge. So it's like you become wise to it. Mm -hmm. You, you, I've heard the definition from Osho, you know, like you have to, um, you like see the flower, don't pick the flower. But then I need to put it in practice, which is like, I need to actually practice that version of love. And then now I'm wise to it. I'm like, yep, that is definitely what it is. Mm -hmm. So you, like, yeah, you need both. I don't know. These are like hard thoughts. These are hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. But like, because there isn't a, it's not a clear answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Right. And who's, who's even talking about that? That's the craziest part about it. It's like, these are the most important questions that we live. Like, why are we here? Where do we go when we die? What is love? How do you become a better species? Like these are really hard questions. But again, you, you, as you mentioned, that is you know these are hard questions. But over time, we've seen it's only a few people that think about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. 